Well, it's a sunny day out there for most of central Arkansas, but the latest tropical storm is drifting towards the Gulf Coast. As of today, Francine is approaching hurricane strength and prompting Louisiana into a state of emergency. Yeah, so what you're seeing right now is a live look of the state's capital city, Baton Rouge. Nathan, meteorologists there are projecting high winds to start as soon as later tomorrow, but back here at home, can we expect any impacts here in Arkansas? We're going to see some impacts okay. from Francine. Nothing like what we experienced with Barrel earlier this year when we had the tornadoes and the heavy rain, and that's just because of the track of the system. It's primarily going to be well to the east of the natural state, but here's the latest from the National Hurricane Center, and you can see it pinwheeling off the coast of Brownsville. It is expected to strengthen into a hurricane over the next 12 hours and make landfall as a hurricane very close to Lafayette or Morgan City, and then it'll continue to push its way into Mississippi, bringing us the chance of rain, maybe some gusty winds. I'll have more of those impacts coming up in my full forecast out there today, though. We're heating things up quickly. We've got a mixture of sun and a few clouds, especially to the east. 86 right now in Hot Springs. It's 81 here in the capital city and 85 in Pine Bluff. Highs today, we're topping out into the upper 80s to low 90s, but it's not going to be humid. Tomorrow, expect increasing clouds. Primarily a dry day. There will be the potential. There could be some showers that start to sneak their way into southeast Arkansas as the first bands of Francine try to approach the natural state. But our chance of rain will be going up tomorrow night. And I think the worst of the weather is going to be happening on Thursday. But there's going to be a sharp difference on where you're watching us from. Most likely, hardly any impacts in West Arkansas. Different story in East Arkansas. I'm going to give you a detailed map on what type of impacts you can expect over the next couple days coming up. All right, Nathan, thank you. Well, today a new addition is being revealed for the Jacksonville North Pulaski School District. Just hours ago, the ribbon was cut on the brand new Bayou Mita Elementary School. This is fresh video from that ceremony earlier today. It's actually the first of two reveals happening this week. In just two days from now, on Thursday, the district will also introduce the new Merle Taylor Elementary. Also happening today, a meeting in Pine Bluff looks to address Arkansas's Medicaid program. Former DHS employees and Arkansans who currently have issues are speaking out at this very moment. We have a team at that meeting working to bring you the latest details tonight at 5 and 6. Some of the holes are this big around, this deep. I'm surprised anybody wants to come here to live at all. If I wasn't rooted here, I'd be gone in a heartbeat. Well, those were the words of people attending last night's quorum court meeting in Jefferson County. This time, the court has failed to approve funding for improving roads. It seems to be something that has been getting consistent complaints recently. The meeting started with discussions regarding a finance committee. And when that ended, fixing the roads became the topic of conversation. That's when the justices were unable to get on the same page, leaving no space in the budget for the repairs. The shape the roads are in, and we need to get it done. This money is in the road department. We just need to move it over so that they can begin to use it. In addition to road funding, almost every single item on the agenda also failed. New at noon, the Pulaski County Circuit Court is upholding a request to prevent the emails of a state Supreme Court justice from being released. According to the Arkansas Business Report, Associate Justice Courtney Hudson made the request after her fellow justices voted to release the documents. There will be a hearing to discuss the matter, and we don't know quite yet when that will take place. Maumel Police is speaking out in response to a threat made to the schools within the city. We first told you about this yesterday. According to police, it's the second time they had to respond to reported threats in the past four days. Because of that, students may have noticed an increased amount of security. Our team also learned schools officials are actively working with Maumel police to ease high tensions. Well, I want to make sure that people know that that we take everything seriously. This is the world we live in. Maumel police is encouraging parents to have conversations with their children to help prevent these types of situations. 
Throughout the week, expect some highway exit ramps to close as RDOT begins testing their wrong way detection system. $55 million will be used to help prevent head on collisions on roads. A previous system reported over 20 incidents of accidents statewide caused by people driving in the wrong direction. With the new system being rolled out, RDOT is hoping to make a change. The lights will go off. The, 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 uh, the driver is alerted that way. That signals to us here at our traffic management center that uh, there has been a wrong way detection happening out there. So once the camera goes off and the person's alerted, many times they will self-correct. You see them in a video, they'll turn around and whatever, uh, but sometimes they don't. And, and so one time could be too many. As he mentioned, the system it looks to help people self-direct themselves, but if you fail to do so, you'll be faced with state police. Meanwhile, Pulaski County is calling on your help to fight pet overpopulation in animal shelters. When paying personal property taxes, you can opt in to donate to the cause. The Give $5 campaign will help create more spay and neuter vouchers that will be used to treat shelter animals. The answer for us is not to have more shelters to where we can keep holding more and more and more dogs. Uh, we need those shelters, but the overall answer is for spaying and neutering the animals that we already have so that there aren't unwanted animals produced. You can even use the voucher system on your own pets. Just reach out to the clinic for further assistance. The vouchers will cover up to $10 in care. Just hours from now, both presidential candidates will come face to face for the first time since receiving their party's nomination. Jared Hill gives you a look at last minute preps for the debate stage. The city of brotherly love is getting ready for the first face off between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. The state, a crucial battleground. I'm interested to hear what both individuals have to say. This debate is really tight and they're both very strong candidates. Some viewers are expecting a spectacle. Makes for a more entertaining debate when when he's uh, you know allowed to run his mouth off. Sources tell CBS News Harris's debate prep included studying what rattles her opponent. Trump preferred a less formal approach and has commented on the matchup at rallies. You know, if I destroy her in the debate, they'll say Trump suffered a humiliating defeat tonight. No matter what. Any chance for a tit for tat is going to be minimal with a rule in place to mute the mics when it's not a candidate's turn to talk. But even the commercial breaks will speak volumes. We don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. Harris's campaign is running an ad during the debate featuring former Trump administration officials who argue he isn't fit to be president. She's also bringing some of them as guests this evening. Both camps have also been eyeing young voters, live streaming events in vertical video to make it easier to watch on a phone. I think if the campaigns are smart, they will be working to get their spin of the debate, their you know best clips, their best moments from the debate on places like TikTok and Instagram. Getting their messages out in the run up to Election Day. Jared Hill, CBS News, Philadelphia. And as you just heard, a growing number of people are becoming interested in the presidential race. And for that reason, we've been seeing a jump in voter registration in Pulaski County. Election officials say a solid number of the public is getting registered, and that includes young adults. Some countries are pushing to ban social media for some age groups. Just ahead, learn why and if the mood could be adopted internationally. And the clouds will be on the increase tonight. It will not be as cool or comfortable, all because the temperatures will be primarily into the 60s when you start off the day on Wednesday. And it will also be more muggy out there. It's all in advance of Francine, which will produce some impacts here in Arkansas. I'll have the details you need to know coming up.